Hey guys, first things first, I can't thank you enough for everyone that went ahead and watched my video on the DIY light tube. I've gotten way more views on that than I thought I would have, and I'm up to over 50 subscribers. And I was not expecting that this early in the channel's life. So to all of you out there who watched, and especially those who subscribed, thank you so much. So in this video, I kind of want to do a little bit of an update to the, that video. And I also want to answer some of y'all's questions about the light tube and how to use it and what can be done to make it even a little bit better. So let's dive into some of those questions and get them answered for you guys. So I had a lot of questions concerning the controllers and the different strips. And there's a little bit of confusion that I wanted to clarify. So there are really two very different types of RGB strips and controllers. There are the three wire, which are your addressable, and those three wires can be power, ground, and data. Now the addressable strips, which is what I have in the light tube, they allow you to control each individual LED. A lot of people will call those NeoPixels. Now, when you get one of those strips, you have to make sure and get a three-wire controller. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Now, the other type of strip, which is the non-addressable, is a four-wire. And on that, you've got power, R, G, B, or red, green, blue. Those strips, each individual LED cannot be controlled, so the whole strip is gonna do the same thing. So it's all gonna be one color, whether it's blue, red, green, purple, whatever you choose. So when you buy your strip, make sure that you get a corresponding controller. If it's gonna be a three wire addressable, you've got to get a three wire controller and vice versa. If you get just a four wire standard non-addressable strip, you have to get a four wire controller. So that answers that. Now that, that was a, I got a lot of questions about that. So I hope that helps out. Uh, multiple strips. So one of the nice thing about these strips is that they have this connector on the end. And this allows you to daisy chain these strips. Now when daisy chaining these strips, there is going to be a cause for concern of power consumption. And that was another question. So we'll kind of tackle those both together. Now in the original video, I had use this small power supply. And while it works relatively fine for one strip, it will not power more than one strip, and that's my bad. So I will actually update the old video and have a link to the new power supply in this video. So if you can see, this one was a five volt, three amp, I believe it was like seven or eight watts. So we're going from that to this, so you can see much bigger. This is a five volt, 10 amp, and I believe it was 15 watts. Now that new power supply should be able to handle two, probably three strips. And then when you do multiple strips and you are gonna be using multiple power supplies, on the other end of the strip, you've got your connector but you've also got these two wires, red and black. So if you have multiple strips, daisy chained up, and you see that you're needing a power to add you know, two or three strips down, you will just pop out the red and black pins from the connector, daisy chain down there, and then wire in another power supply. And like I said, I'll have the new power supply uh, linked in the comments below. And I'm gonna update the old video as well. Uh, multiple controllers in the app was another question, or you know, if you have multiple strips, can they all be controlled by the same app? And yes, like most of these RGB apps, you can have multiple devices. Now I've only got the one device, see if that will focus. But you can see, you can add multiple devices 
to that app. And I'm fairly certain most of the other controllers, their apps are gonna be the same way. All right, overheating. So I did have a question, uh, is there a worry about overheating having this many LEDs powered on inside a tube? And I can tell you from experience, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. So the inspiration for using this type of uh, LED strip, which is the WS2812B, which is your 144 per meter LED, or your NeoPixel, actually came from an old hobby of mine. And that is custom lightsabers. And this is my Ray-inspired lightsaber. And you know, the, the hilt, the, the metal piece, that is a replica. Um, the chassis inside that holds the electronics, which is a Arduino style board and some LEDs and uh, the battery and all the hookups for the, uh, the blade. Now the blade is a one inch polycarbonate white transluc translucent tube and it actually has two of those strips back to back inside of a white foam core. Now this tube is only one inch, whereas the RGB light tube that we've been talking about, that is closer to two inches. So there's a lot more room in there to breathe. This is very closed and compact and I'll show you how bright it is. So you can see this thing is ridiculous. So you can do all the different colors, different effects, but it just goes to show you the, the power of the, the Neo Strip. So here's even a uh, Lord of the Rings inspired font. So that's the eye of Sauron, pretty cool. So, but anyways, I've run this lightsaber. I've run this lightsaber for a very long time and it, it never is overheated. So two strips inside a much smaller enclosure versus the one strip inside what's basically an open air enclosure. I don't think you have any worries about overheating. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, so that's kind of most of the questions that I was getting. Um, I did want to show kind of an update to the tube and it involves how you make it. And I actually like this much better because you don't have to deal with wax paper anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one off. And I want you to see the difference. This is what the T8 tube looks like, brand new, completely clear. And then you can see this one, which there's nothing in it other than the light tube and what the light tube is in, which I'll show you here in a minute. So all I did was I took your standard scotch bright pad, the red one, and just scuffed it up really good. Two coats of this frosted glass paint. And it gives a really nice smooth finish and you don't have to deal with the wax paper anymore. So you don't have to deal with, because I know some people were asking questions about how do you get the wax paper to stick? I didn't have that issue, but I'm sure that there are other wax papers that are harder for the tape to fit. And then there was actually one person who had commented something I had never heard of before. Let me see if I can find it again. Oh yes, Drew Lewis, thank you. He said, milky covers. And I was like, milky covers? I've never even heard of milky covers. Hold on just a second. All right, 
I'm back. So I looked up milky covers and all they are are just, it's actually kind of the same thing as the lightsaber tube. It's a plastic or polycarbonate that's a translucent white. That's what this is. Now I found these on Amazon and it's basically just a metal guide. Let's see if I can, it's just a metal guide that you can fit your RGB strip in and these are, you can bend these if you want for other applications. And then this, which the important part, which this might be, here we go. You can see it has a dome shape to it. And so you put your strip down in the channel and then you cover it up with that half dome milky cover as they call it. And then you just hot glue it into the tube on one side. And I'll go ahead and turn that tube back on. And the effect is as good or better than with the, the wax paper. So I will link below those milky covers as well. And I think that will give you a much better looking product, much more professional than stuffing some wax paper in there. Been really happy with these, let's see here. Get something a little more exciting than just one color. Yeah, there we go. So that's the update to the RGB strip. If I've missed any of your questions, uh, I think you can see now. I will, I will go into the comments and I will answer any question as, to the best of my abilities. Um, so if you have any other questions, lay them on me and we can uh, try and make this as good as possible together. So again, thank you to everyone who watched. Thank you to all of you guys who subscribed and I encourage anyone else to subscribe so that you can get more of this content and we can maybe talk more about the new desk because I think, pretty sure a lot of you in the first four or five videos probably realized I was doing everything on a pool table. Not anymore. But we won't talk about that today. We'll talk about that another day. So with that being said, see you guys later. I'm out.